Hello, welcome to the Lisa Love Stitching Podcast or Floss Tube. My name is Lisa and welcome to all of my um, subscribers who are returning viewers and a big warm welcome to all of you because even if you're just dropping by for the first time, hopefully you enjoy what you see and you'll come back again to watch me in my next episode. So um, it's only been a week since I posted my last video, which was for Stitch Mania. I have since given up on the Stitch Mania wagon, jumped off that wagon. <laughs> um, I just lost my enthusiasm. Uh, I think I was a bit stitched out by the time I finished the old white farmhouse sampler and, and then um, I just wasn't feeling the creative juices flowing on the projects I was working on. Also, um, I couldn't find the fabric that I bought the linen um, to do the Springhouse Trio, which was one I was really, really looking forward to doing. And um, so I just sort of lost my momentum. Anywho, moving forward, um, I've just, I decided during the week, I really wasn't happy with the Ada that I was stitching on for my um, Scottish map with the tartan. I just really think I should have, I mean, I started it when I was only beginning cross stitch really last year, um, but I really love working on linen. So I think what I'm going to do is just not do any more and restart it on some blue linen, um, probably 32 count. And um, once I get that linen, then I'll start the project again. I hadn't got, I mean, I've done a fair chunk, but I hadn't got too far along. So um I got to the third page in, so out of 16 pages, I think it is. So I don't think that's too bad. Um, it was like getting three quarters of the way through. I mean, you'd th there's no way you would pull out after that. Um, so, yeah, so that's on hold at the moment. Um, I have been working on the Sweet Shop, which is a Christmas one by um, Little House Needleworks. And it's this one here. It's going to be a Christmas ornament. I'm probably going to finish it maybe like a flat fold. I was watching Bonna Pfeiffer's um, tutorial the other day. Um, she does it so perfect, it's intimidating to think I could do it, but I might give it a go to make my own flat fold um, to put up at Christmas time. So this is where I've got to. Let me just get my board. Sorry, it's still on the hoof. Um, so I've started the tree. I started the tree and I've done the curtains in the window and part of the tree decoration. And those red dots are going to be candy canes. And I've done a bit of the front door and um, I started, uh, oh yeah, I filled in all of this um, cream colour here in between, as well as down here and around the door. So now I've picked up some more threads today, so now I can fill in the bottom of the door and the rest of this window and finish off here and the tree. So I haven't got a lot to do before I'm finished really. Um, I also needed the, the red so that I could put the brick... Um, chimneys in so yeah so that's coming along what did I just do with it oh I put it in that bag good idea Lisa okay so yeah so that's where I'm at so I've still got this tree to do and finish off the window and the door and put the little sign on out the front so yeah so not much to do so I've been enjoying that except I did stuff up one bit where I must have Mess the count up instead of going over two, I've gone over one or something. I don't know. So I'll have to fudge it or redo a little bit. Um, but anyway, I'm liking how it looks. This is this, the linen that I got at a stitch in time to practice on. So, yeah, I think it's a good idea when you're first trying linen to get a piece, sacrificial piece, and just know that that's your sacrificial piece and give it a go. And that way you don't feel too precious about it. And then you've got the confidence to give it a go. Um, otherwise, it can be a bit intimidating. But linen is not much harder than using Ada, honestly. 
it's just a matter of getting used to counting two threads two threads so two threads up two threads across for each stitch and once you get the first stitch in you'll be right I'll just drop that I haven't got the squeaky chair today I've got my other um, chair <laughs> you'll be saying thank thank goodness for that like don't want to listen <laughs> to the squeak squeak oh sorry um so what else um i haven't got any other whips that i've been working on this week just that one and uh yeah so i finally went to spotlight today that's our version of joanne's or michael's and um i got the fabric again for the springhouse trio so oops I got, I won't do it there because otherwise it's going to bang up and down. I got Belfast um, Zweigart Linen pre-cut, uh, 34 centimetres by 48 centimetres, which is 13 inches by 19 inches, and it's 32 count. So that's the brand, that's the linen. So I've got that, and I think it's mostly edge so i just got a couple of edges on the ends to stitch over to make sure it doesn't fray so i might do that wasabi after i vacuum i have to vacuum after this um so the springhouse trio is this one so it's sort of like um may flowers and april showers so i'm going to start on this i've got the remaining threads that i needed so i've got all of that so that's exciting i can finally start that and I was on the phone to my mum the other day and she was, I was talking to her about all my cross stitch projects and she was, oh, I would really love a willy wagtail. <laughs> so um, I don't want her to miss out on having something stitched. So I had a look online, but there's no, there's nothing really. Um, hardly any, oh, well, I could only find one pattern out there in the uh, interwebs um, for a willy wagtail. And it comes from Country Threads um charts by fiona jude and it's um serial number is fjp-105-08 there are a series of these bird ones where they come with four birds uh native australian birds so check it out um uh, like they've got a whole range i don't know if i showed this to you the other day i could have anyway they've got a whole range and so this is it so that's the willy wagtail there we have them um they're all around the neighborhood. They're very cute. And they, when they land, they wag their tail. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Hello, I'm so happy. <laughs> that's what they're like. I'm happy all the time wagging their tail. So that's the willy wag tail pattern I got. And he's on a wattle tree and he's just attending to his nest, he or she. So that's the one I'm going to do. So yeah, so, and it comes with all the details for all of the birds. So the other birds are zebra finches, um, double barred finches and red capped robins, which I didn't even know Australia had robins, would you, you know, I don't know. So that's the birds there. But yeah, there's all these other Australiana patterns, birds, pubs, possums, you name it. Yeah, so, and then I think on the other side there, they have more as well. So, yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to do that for my mum. So I got some more of the Belfast, Belfast 32 count. Same size as the other one I just got. That's the fabric there. So I got that to do it. I think it should be the right size. So these are the threads, 646, 3799, 434, 648. I couldn't get all the threads for it today. 3822, I love that colour. That'll be for the wattle. Um, 3031, 3011. And 436 so um, they're really lovely colors 
but I couldn't get all of them because Spotlight, for some reason, like half the things were empty where the DMC was. I don't know what was going on. Maybe they had a big sale and I missed out. I don't know, but there was no... Hardly any to choose from today, so I couldn't get all of the threads that I wanted, but that's okay. I've got something to start with. Um, I don't have a project bag for that, so I'm just going to be using a large, um, like, glad bag. But I got some fabric the other week on sale and I don't know if I showed this to you but this is the one I got that I made that um thread uh parking mat out of is this vintage one I got this cute this is all quilting cotton this cute pink one I got These beautiful birds. This Gravillia. It's a native Australian plant. Really pretty. Another gra Gravillia. So pretty. With the lovely leaves. And another Grevillea. <laughs> I was on a Grevillea roll. But they have some Australian native plant ones. But the last lot they had weren't as pretty as these ones. So I've got these. Really lovely. Just love them. So I've also got this other pink fabric. Which I've had in my stash for forever. And it is... Oh. Not there. It's this colour fabric I've got left over. Ooh, this one, this fabric. I've got a heap of that left. So I might be able to pair that up with, I wonder, that one is a lining, maybe. Anywho, uh, that was a knitting bag I made up yonks ago. Do you love my cute little shopping bag? Wayne's mum gets me these shopping bags from her church bazaar sale and i've shown it before they're just little but they're perfect when you can't there's no um, plastic bags allowed anymore so they've got like a little pocket in the front but what happens is you fold the sides in you fold the sides in fold that over and tuck the um little arms in oops tuck the bum in like so and then you just fold it up and fold it down and there's a little um, button there like a snap and then you just snap that and then that's what fits in your purse when you go shopping I love them I should make my own but you know she gets them from the church thing it supports charity and these are so cute um okay so that's all of my whips my fabric um so the reason i'm showing you the fabric is i think i will have a go at making my own clear fronted project bag fingers crossed i have some spare zippers so i might see what i can do if the clear front doesn't work out i might make some project bags that are just closed in but they're zippered project bags so i got i thought oh, i'm gonna give it another go i tried stitching on this before i couldn't get as thick a vinyl as I wanted I think this might be too thin but anyway we'll go with it but the thicker one was seen to be really thick I couldn't get the one in between they didn't have it so anyway see how we go with that I've got um enough to sink a battleship there um otherwise it can become a table cover <laughs> to protect the table um what else was I going to say yeah so before i go on to haul um i'll just say that i had a little video prior to this one announcing the winner of my 100 subscriber giveaway so um stitchy ray won that one so congratulations 
and if you could get in touch with me on that video I and on this one I will put my in the drop down box below I'll put my contact email address and I also replied to your comment with my contact email address so if you could get in touch with me as soon as possible that would be great um, I just need your email of your mailing address and then I can send the prize off to you um, and I'm sorry you missed out Leanne Gaffer but hopefully next time but thank you so much for participating I really appreciate it I only had two comments um, and one up on the decision wheel um, so I wanted to show you oh god I do this every time I had it all set up what did I do with it OMG where did I put it? I just had, oh Lord, I just had the prize pack. There it is. Brain like a sieve, I tell you. Sorry for the jiggling of the camera. So this was the prize, which is a farmhouse sampler by Stacey Nash Primitives. Comes with the chart and that was it originally, but I managed, um, to purchase at All Threads Embroidery, my local um, store, l &S, which is on the south side of Brisbane. I managed to get four out of the six colours, classic colour works, to go with this chart. So, um, Stitchy Ray, you will get these four classic colour works threads, which is Dolce de Leche, which is this cute pink one. Um, barrel cactus it's like a soft green onion skin and desert mesquite this one's a bit paler than the one I had but still very beautiful so the other ones I couldn't get was polywog um, and uh, eggshell so you might be able to find those at your local LNS or somewhere online in the UK. I think you're in the UK. Um, so if you could, yes, you are in the UK. I watch your podcast. What am I saying? You've got the beautiful Welsh accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, so hopefully you should be able to get the other two colours. But I've got you a good start on the project and you just need to get um, choose some your own um, fabric to stitch it on I didn't get fabric because I know people are quite personal about what they prefer and I'd rather you bought something for yourself that you like so yeah so anyway you got the chart and that and I'll throw in a couple of other little things um, for you in the prize pack so let me know ASAP so that I can get this all to you and um, yeah I may wait depending I'll see I may wait till um, mid-June to send it to you because I'm going to my retreat and I may see something small to put in there with with it for you oh dear wait I hope you can't hear that noise planes underneath me in the garage prepping is sanding to um paint near the laundry anyway I'm not going to be much longer so hopefully <laughs> you won't get too annoyed by the sound okay so haul I've I recently tried videoing numerous times and I cannot even tell you and I apologize if this is repeated I'll just show them real quick I can't remember if I showed you I think I did did I show you these I can't remember because I've recorded a couple of times and it kept failing so I've got Easter girl this is from motif spot by hand um, that I bought it through um, with thy needle it's Lila's studio. It's the, um, oh, sorry, with the needle sampler. Old Witch Mary, which I'm going to do as a stitch along at my birthday in October. And you can stitch any Halloween project then. It doesn't have to be this one. Um, and I'm going to use um, Picture This Plus Ale 32 count for this because I didn't have a, I couldn't get hold of a um, stormy colour one. And then I got this Dimensions. I think I did show you this, um, the Snow Geese. I got this, but um, it comes with the Ada, but I'm going to swap it out for linen. And I might just give that away to someone. I know there's a few ladies at my stitching group that use Ada, so they might like the Ada. It's a nice blue colour. 
But yeah, this is my first dimensions kit, so I'm looking forward to starting this as well. But this week I'll only be starting um, Springhouse Trio and maybe um, I might start the Willy Wagtail to get it started because um, Mum's birthday is in October, the same as mine. She's um, earlier in the month, um, where I'm on the 25th. And um, I might start that so that I can try and get it done for her birthday, if not for Christmas, and I'll get it framed for her. So yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, so that's everything. So um, what's been happening this week? Um, bit of a sad week. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it previously on here, but my old school friend who was in my group of friends um, from year seven to 10 at high school, um, Kristen Pearson, she um, was a beautiful singer. <laughs> Um, she went missing last year in September and no one had seen her since and everyone was uh, on the lookout for her and I'd posted on Instagram and Facebook to see if anyone had seen her. The last time she'd been seen was on the Central Coast in New South Wales near Hornsby um, and then um, it came out uh, la late last week um, that she'd been found um, and she'd been murdered. Get a bit upset. Um, she was last sighted on CCTV camera in Katoomba, um, leaving her hotel and buying some shoes and a few food items and a jumper from River's store in Katoomba. And after that, she was not seen again. And in March this year, she was found with no clothing, no belongings. Her skeletal remains were found in a dam or near a dam, on, on a dam property um, that is closed to the public. So it's only open to, um, it's only accessible to workers um, behind big closed gates. And she was found somewhere on that property. And... Um, they're not sure when she died exactly, but her skeletal remains were found. She wasn't buried or anything. So um, I feel really heartsick for her that she was alone and frightened when she died. Um, and I hope that they find who did this to her. It's not fair that women have to be afraid to go on their own somewhere or travel alone or whatever. Um, there's too much violence in this world towards women and it's it's not on um so yeah and her mother is absolutely distraught of course you would be and she's left her mum and two brothers behind and um they had a memorial for her on thursday and her mother had asked for everyone to wear something sparkly or bright that day and they released balloons at her um, funeral and um yeah, she's, she was a beautiful girl. She had a beautiful voice. She'd released an album last in 2017 called Liberty. Um, you can find it on, um, on um, iTunes. So um, Kristen Pearson, um, and it's called Liberty. And um, she was going to release another album or EP um, in late... 2018 but she disappeared so um she was a really kind person she never said a mean word to me growing up or anything like that she was just a really lovely person she had a beautiful voice she could sing up high like mariah carey her voice would go that high she was just amazing and she really did have a lot of talent and it just seems um a damn shame that it's been cut short and that she's been taken from her family and friends and um, I hope wherever she has gone, her spirit or whatever, if there is such a thing, I hope that she's found peace. Um, so, yeah, so that was really sad. So that was a hard week. And I hadn't seen her much since school, but I had seen her a couple of times on the bus going to uni and things like that. But um, she'd moved overseas for a while and I'd moved overseas somewhere else and then... Um, she lived in Melbourne and Sydney and then, yeah, so we just did took different pathways, but um, I always thought of her and um, 
followed her music and things like that so yeah so that's a real shame and um anyway that's that i'll leave that for now um so um what else yesterday wayne and i went to bribey island um in the morning and he had a kayak and then we had a barbecue picnic at our favorite spot at pumstone beach or park and it's right on the water near the um not far from the bridge and it was lovely weather a bit breezy the the wind was a bit cold but it was a beautiful sunny day and Wayne had a really nice time kayaking and we had a nice barbecue I baked a chocolate cake for our anniversary because tomorrow well today um is our six year anniversary so that was really nice to celebrate that and then we went home and had a rest for a while and then went back out to dinner last night and then just bought some ice cream from the supermarket and come home and had ice cream in our gym jams and watch tv together <laughs> we watched groundhog day uh so anyway so um we know how to party and um yeah so anyway so that was a nice weekend that we've had and um We've just got next weekend and then the following one we'll be off to Newcastle um, for my nan's 100th birthday and visiting um, family and also um, going to my first retreat the following weekend after that one. So I can't wait. So um, can't wait to see you, Laura. <laughs> and um, yeah, so anyway, so I think we'll probably have a subdued weekend next weekend. We might go out Saturday night for dinner. Uh, I don't think anywhere flash because we're trying to save our pennies for the trip and yeah so whatever you're doing I might I don't know if I'll um, record next week or it might be a couple of weeks before I record again after my retreat I will try and take photos at the retreat um, but I'm not sure because it's such an intimate setting I just want to enjoy it and um, I don't know if everyone wants me to taking video or photos so anyway we'll see how we go and I'll try and share some of that experience with you and um, till next time um, happy stitching and as I say there's a hug in every stitch um, you put all your love into your work so um, whatever you're stitching enjoy it and um, I'll talk to you again soon and congratulations Stitchy Ray get in touch with me okay bye mm -hmm.